the environment of a company is totally different it has been affected by micro environment as well as macro environment and you should go with all the legal things and only then you can register your business as a company when it comes to sole proprietor he can start the business whenever he wants he can take his own decision nobody is there many people in the company so everybody will go with their own interest what is that interest hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all i'm abhilash chandra from the department of business studies in vedyash from pu college the temple of excellence now hope you people are doing really good and you are staying safe here is what i have brought is the next session in the previous we learned about the merits of company now we'll go with the limitations of company i want you people to take your pen and a paper or a notepad and then just go with all these things what i'll tell you because these are the questions which are the base of commerce if somebody ask you what is a company and you have a blank face then it is actually very very bad so what is a company company is an artificial person what is it company is an artificial person now limitations of joint stock company in the sense see everywhere you have a boon as well as you have a bane the same way here also now you need to recall about sole proprietor partnership cooperative society their demerits and this demerit only then you will have the edge to compare what or which type of a uh, business you are supposed to go with now see everywhere business is that the objective of any business is to make profit now which business if you go with you will get more profit that is what you are supposed to calculate now here limitations of joint stock company limitations of joint stock company what are the limitations of joint stock company please understand here the first one is complexity in formation whenever you start a company what happens is people are like too many people are there so what happens is complexity is there that is what is called complexity now why complexity is there you are supposed to get your company registered you need to register your company when you go with registration what happens is you are supposed to submit too many documents you are supposed to get too many documents submitted in the registrar office and then you are supposed to take care about the safety measurement of the members shareholders the creditors all those people you are supposed to take the safety measurement here also are what regulations are more that is what when you go with the safety you have rules and regulations you need to actually go with it and then when it comes to the documents what happens is you are supposed to know that which are the documents you are supposed to file and you are supposed to adhere the things now this is what it is we call it as what complexity but when it is compared to the partnership or the business the too many complexity is not there they can start whenever they want and they can end whenever they want but here in company it's not like that you are supposed to go with the too many documents because of the registration the next thing is lack of secrecy now here this is a feature where in the limitations of a company where it's a advantages in sole trader the reason is what he don't want to reveal anything whatever he has decided but when it comes to the company what happens whatever the decision is taken by the management the management need to tell it to its shareholders because the shareholders are the real owners so secrecy cannot be maintained it should be transparent the next thing is impersonal work environment impersonal work environment in the sense the environment of a company is totally different it has been affected by micro environment as well as macro environment the next one here is numerous regulations i told you about the rules and regulation there are too many rules and regulations students the reason is what the company should not cheat anybody that is what the thing is that's why numerous regulation delay in decision making now decision making i'll tell you what happens it depends on a company to another company but it really depends on how big the company is if the company is very big what happens is delay in decision happens because there are so many people and you are supposed to take consent of all those people the small company usually what happens is the decision is taken quicker next is 
oligarch management there are too many people that's why the management becomes very very complex and it is like divided into too many kind of a things the next is conflict in interest conflict in interest you will come across your shareholders creditors and the employees everybody has their own kind of a wish and the will and that is the reason conflict will happen now example shareholders they want more dividend or they want more interest now there are few people who are the preference shareholder there are few people who are the equity shareholders they'll get more kind of a thing there are people who are debenture holders i'll tell you more about this when i go with the conflicts in interest right so the first one is what it's all about your complexity right that is the complexity in formation to start a company what all complexity what all fa they, the phases of formation you will actually get to know it is very 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 huge the first one is the formation of a company requires greater time the first thing is what time is more you will actually consume more time to register a particular business has a company the thing is the efforts and extension knowledge of legal requirement what is that you should know you should know the legal requirement that's why students the company actually will hire the lawyers they'll actually hire ca cs that is chartered accountant and company secretary so that they are the one who are expertise in their field and they are the one who will get the company registered that is what happens there and what exactly it is the procedures are too much in the sense to go with registering a company i'll tell you the process of registering a company in the previous in the next sessions i'll just tell you what exactly happened the stages of formation what is the first stage what is the second stage here you will get the first stage right what is the first stage you need to actually think about what name should i actually give to my company when you give a name to a company then you will actually google that means somewhere else somebody have already taken that name now what happens is again you are supposed to search because your company name should be what unique and nobody should have copied or you shouldn't actually copy somebody's company's name that is what the first stage is and then whether i should go with private company or a public company now you have a question mark how many people will actually invest how many people will not invest all those things what is the scale of production which type of company you want to start you want to go with goods and services or only goods or only services now too many things are there and then you are supposed to fulfill the law what is that you are supposed to fulfill you are supposed to fulfill the law and what is that you need to actually research more that is what is called the complexity of formation has a company is compared right it's like has compared to sole proprietorship and partnership form of organization forming a company is very very complex now if i want to start a sole proprietorship as a sole trader what happens is if i have a place or i don't have a place i can start it but when it comes to company it is like you should have a place and you should go with all the legal things and only then you can register your business as a company but in partnership or sole trader what happens is whenever we feel like starting we'll start whenever we feel like quitting it or liquidating or cancelling it we'll actually do it but in a company you are supposed to go with all legal formalities the second one is lack of secrecy here what happens please compare this with sole trader partnership and then company now whatever the decisions is taken by the sole trader now the sole trader will not tell to anybody that means his things are secretly kept now there is an advantage of a sole trader in partnership what happens is now both of them have invested the money now whatever the decision is taken by them it is actually where it is here only but when it comes to the company what happens is now company is something called separate legal entity which you have studied in the previous sessions right now some company what happens is the owner are who the shareholders are the owner who are the owners the shareholders are the owners but who are the people who control the company in the previous session i have actually told you who are the people who control the company that is people who are the board of directors and the management officials 
Now they are the one who will actually control the company. That means they will go with day to day management. Now what is it? The money is not the board of directors alone. It is the shareholders also. That means whatever the company is doing it as an artificial person by the execution of board of directors, the shareholders need to know what is happening in the company. Now understand. Now the shareholder can also be the competitor of this company, right? Even they will get to know what is happening in the company. That is why it is called as lack of secrecy. Right. The next one here is impersonal work environment. That means what? There is something called separation. Now I told you the same. I'll give you the same example. Now here the company is that now shareholders are the owners. Right. Shareholders are the owners. But who is a person who is controlling them? Now controlling is done by whom? The board of directors or the management. Now there is something called impersonal work environment that means what it's somebody who started it we call them as the promoters right promoters now this promoters are there they will start the company after that the shareholder will come and then the board of directors now what happens there are like three people now like one here there are two and here the board of directors Whereas in sole trader as well as in partnership what happens is I have invested and I need to get the work done. That means what dedication is more. Now partnership both of them have invested now they need to get the thing. Now again what happens is interest is more. But here what happens is the interest is less. Reason is what suppression of ownership and management. Now they'll only think about their benefit, but not the benefit of the company. It's like short term gain is what their thing is. Only those company are the best and they are in the top where the shareholder as well as the management has a very good friendly relationship. That's why those company are still exist in India or across the world now this is what happens here leads to situational in which their lack of efforts as well as personal involvement nobody will have what the personal involvement they'll only think about okay right now today i made a profit of one lakh rupees i'm enough i'll take the things and i'll go that is what happens for the shareholders the minute i have invested now i need to buy the shares i have purchased the shares asa for one lakh rupees now i'm selling the shares for two lakh rupees i got one lakh rupees i'm enough I, i'll leave that is what is the mentality of the shareholders now the board of directors what happens is somebody else is actually paying more so i'll actually go and work there now what happens their interest so that is what happens in impersonal work management the next thing is numerous regulation, numerous regulations, this is too many regulations are there, too many documents you need to submit, too many things you are supposed to fulfill and who are the people who have actually told you this, this is actually done by the act and which is the act 1956, what is the revised act of company, it is 2013, very good students now many of you are able to understand this. 1956 was the first act and now it is the revised act is 2013 now those people will tell that there are few norms right there are few norms which they need to actually fulfill that is what they are supposed to do and if there are few norms which are not fulfilled that means what the process will not go that is why we say company has a numerous regulations now rules and regulations are common but when it comes to company how much is it it is all levied by the company's act of 1956 and 2013 you need to adhere and you are supposed to give all the legal provisional documents now the functioning of a company the functioning of a company is subject to many legal provisional and compulsion there are few things which are provisional there are few things which are compulsion you are supposed to balance and you are supposed to do see compulsion in the sense of mandatory things which are there you are supposed to actually submit those documents the documents can be memorandum of association now i'll tell you more about this topic memorandum of association in the coming classes now it's a kind of a quick kind of a 
thing what exactly you are supposed to memorandum of association these are the documents which are compulsory for the registration of a company then say here memorandum of association of association but this is called article of association now, memorandum of association and article of association are the two documents which is very, very compulsory. And the third document here you will have something called incorporation. What is it? Incorporation. Now, we actually call that as incorporation in the sense INC dot incorporation. If you have seen this US companies in the end of that, the name they will actually get INC, Apple INC. Right, incorporated that means registered as called the incorporation. Now, I'll tell you more about this trademark, incorporation, registration, patent, and all those in the coming classes. Now, here what happens is numerous regulation in the sense you need to do with so many process like auditing, you need to give report, you need to give statements, you need to tell profit and loss, you are supposed to go with your journal entry, all those documents are there and that should be what? It should be like day to day from the day to day activity to the last you are supposed to show because internal audit will happen as well as external audit will also happen so that the government will see whether you are making a good legal business or you are doing any fraudulent kind of a thing, that is what happens here. The next thing is delay in decision making. Now, though the board of directors are there, board of directors are there, right? And they know what exactly to be done because they are the professional in their thing. But still, there are many people, right? There are many people like you have shareholders, you have creditors, you have the stakeholders, you have the employees, you have the other managing partners all those people are there so everybody what happens is you need to console and convince all the people even if you want to take a decision which is benefited to the company now you may know that there is a benefit for the company but all these people should actually agree for it only then you can go that is what is the limitations of a joint stock company when it comes to sole proprietor he can start the business whenever he wants he can take his own decision nobody is there to actually question him whereas in partnership also what happens is there are like two or three or four five six whoever the partners are only you are supposed to convince those people but when it comes to the shareholder what happened when it comes to the company what happens is you have so many people and you are supposed to convince then what happens is you will miss that opportunity of making a profit now here companies are democratically managed through the board of directors who will actually manage the board of directors which is followed by the top management middle management and lower management i'll give you the levels of management here students okay please understand the levels of management it is like divided now you have three tire three tire in the sense three levels they are broadly classified into three levels one is the top level middle level and the lower level or we can call it as supervisory level okay now in the top level who will be there the chairman will be there md managing director will be there bod board of directors are there ceo what is it ceo chief executive officer chief executive officer is there then cfo chief financial officer is there now these people are in the top level there are too many people i am just giving you like uh, five examples here in the middle level what happens is the managers will be there who will be there managers okay now the managers are there now here manager what happens is now all the manager human resource manager marketing manager finance manager all the other managers are here now here the managers and the top level now here what happens the other employees the clerk supervisor all those people will come here now what it is, if somebody here wants to take a decision, okay, now they can't take a decision, the reason is they need to ask the manager, what is it, the supervisory level, somebody wants to take a decision, okay, of getting a things done, what, whichever they feel like, it will benefit the company, but still he cannot take the decision, he need to ask the manager. Now the manager, some of that 
he will actually say okay you can go for it but some of the decisions the manager also cannot take the manager need to give the manager need to take time and he need to ask the top level now understand what happens is at the time he takes and he takes now later what happens this particular person will say okay you can go for it okay he'll give his consent just in five minutes or five seconds can they say yes 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 definitely no they need to see what exactly it is right now delay in decision making now the manager will come and he'll tell this person that yes now we have taken approval now you can go for it at that point of a time what will happen two to three days will be done now what is it opportunity is lost this is happens in the delaying decision now understand you have top management they will ask the middle management the middle management will actually tell the lower management that what exactly to be done this is what happens in the company the next thing here hope you have understood now the next thing here is all management that is complexity is there too much management is there right now you'll understand what exactly it is the owner have minimal influence that means the real owner have the minimal influence that means who are the owner the shareholders though it is our money but who's playing the board of directors are playing that's why it is what it is in terms of controlling and running the business now the shareholders cannot say that okay the law has given us the ownership now i'll come i'll start i'll uh, go with the company process now it is not because the minimal influence is given to the shareholders the owners it is so because the shareholders are spread all over the country even if i take one share of a company i'll be the owner of that particular company but i cannot go and i cannot give my orders to those people now definitely you would have taken the shares but now you cannot go and sit in the board of directors meeting the next thing here is you need to understand it is so because the shareholder are spread over the country and very small percentage attend the general meeting usually what happens is annual general body meeting agm should happen now there are say one crore shareholders now do you think all that one crore shareholders will come and attend the meeting definitely no right so that is what happens and that is called as oligarch management the next one is conflict interest now when i was teaching you this conflict interest i told you there are many people in the company so everybody will go with their own interest what is that interest now we have employees consumer shareholder now i have given you few of the example we call these people has stakeholders of a company what is it stakeholders of the company who gets benefited by the company now employees what is their interest the employees interest is to earn more salary correct now they'll work only for what salary that is what the employees work for and the next thing is they want more fringe benefits incentives other benefits right that is the reason they actually work now consumers are there now why are the consumers are listed in the stakeholder even they are consuming the product of the company now what is their interest the consumer interest is what you charge less right you charge less and give us more product like that is called the less and more combination i'll give you here now there is one consumer here now he'll come he'll buy he'll buy a product now why and when he will buy i'll tell you now there is a product quality the consumer wants it to be high quantity should also be high but when it comes to the price okay when it comes to the price he want it to be less now that is his interest the consumer only then he'll buy right the next thing is shareholders what is that shareholders they want their interest is what i need to in the sense we need to get more money that is a interest or the dividend or the profit the way the shareholders have taken the shares right there are so many shares and for so many shares they have so many kind of a thing now that means what they want more than what they have invested now what happens this is what the thing that is what the limitations of a company now in 
the sole trader of partnership what is it they have only one objective that is i need to make profit i need to earn and then i need to wind up the business but here what happens the employees are there the employees want more salary if you are making profit and you are giving more salary where will you actually keep the remaining profit where you will actually how will you actually give money to the shareholders now the shareholders are there they are getting they are making more profit right now if you give all the money to the shareholder where will you run your company you need to have something called reserves and surplus so everywhere what is it the company will be in a confused that whom should i actually satisfy am i supposed to satisfy the consumer if you satisfy your consumer what will happen you are supposed to give increase your quality as well as quantity but the price will be less now if the price is less where you will give salary how will you actually talk to your shareholders all those things are there that is what is called as conflict in interest so these are the limitations of joint stock companies students hope you know what exactly all these are if you don't know you know what exactly you are supposed to do call your abila sir and abila sir will give you all the tricky tricks to remember the limitation of joint stock company vidyashram is the only college which is actually helping all the students for a free and that is how we are we are only for the students and we are by the students if you want our channel to be very famous what you are supposed to do is share like subscribe and i'll tell you what it is if you can share our videos to many there are many people who will take advantage of us and whatever we are doing even in this pandemic now that will be benefited thank you so much students have a nice day i'll see you when i see you